90% of the animal representations are there. It's the only place in Neo where you have a special acoustics with an echo. It does work. Yes. <laughs> it was just incredible. The acoustics are incredible. So is it a coincidence that um, the place where they put most animal representations is the only place in a two miles in, in a one and a half mile long cave where uh, where you've got that kind of acoustics? I don't think so. Skip Atwater is using sound and sensory deprivation to alter Carol's state of consciousness. Inside the Monroe Institute's cave-like isolation chamber, she can see nothing, feel nothing. Her only external stimulus comes from tones in her headphones. And that sound is doing something remarkable. Just as two eyes give us binocular vision to calculate depth, our two ears allow us to calculate the direction and source of a sound, a capability vital to our ancestors' survival. Low frequency sound coming from over here would arrive at this ear first, and then a slightly different out of phase signal arrive at this ear. And if we would turn our heads towards the source, this would equalize the phase difference. When manipulated, this survival mechanism can have another powerful effect. The tones in Carol's ears are slightly out of phase, but they can't be equalized by turning her head. As a result, Carol's brain combines the sounds into a third tone, created from the difference between the original tones. This phenomenon is called binaural beating and it's modifying Carol's brainwaves. Our state of consciousness is linked to brainwave activity, which can be measured by electroencephalograph or EEG. Carol's EEG shows strong activity below seven cycles per second, known as theta and delta waves. These frequencies are usually associated with dreams and sleep, but Atwater says Carol's state is better described as body asleep, mind awake. All those bright colors tell us we're getting lots of delta brain waves going on as she moves into her out-of-body experience. The states of allowing your mind to travel away from your body or that has been characterized by some as an out-of-body experience of this consciousness movement is one that's characterized by this slow wave delta. So using the word sleep isn't really appropriate in this case because our minds are not asleep. Our minds are open and awake to experience. Stanley Krippner says ancient stories of flight were not inspired by aliens but by shamans. Experimenting with sensory deprivation, sound, and sometimes psychedelic plants, they learn to alter their states of consciousness, to propel them into otherworldly realms. Drumming, dancing, dreams, drugs, the four Ds of shamanism, as I often say, this produces very vivid mental imagery, visual imagery, but also auditory imagery. This becomes the material for songs, for marvelous paintings, for even architectural structures. And this is something that was the province of the shaman. David Lewis Williams and Jean Clot have no doubt sound and ritual inspired the artists of Neo. It must have been a ritual center of some sort, I think. The, deep, the deeper gallery to, to the, the gallery. They found further evidence the artists were in altered states. So now we're coming to the dots. 
strange geometric patterns on the cave walls. Concave, and people put uh, paint on their fingers and then they marked the, the rock like that. Similar patterns, known as entoptic images, are often reported by modern humans entering an altered state of consciousness. There are a limited number of geometric shapes that are wired into the human nervous system that appear in glowing forms within one's vision. Entoptic images appear superimposed over normal vision and are thought to be generated in the visual cortex, the part of the brain where signals from the eyes are processed. Dots arranged in lines and grids, crosshatches and zigzags, appear in many of humanity's oldest artworks. Professor Lewis Williams believes many of these geometric images are a record of shamans exploring the hidden depths of their minds. Another very important form is the vortex or the spiral, which represents in, almost throughout the world the tunnel or the entrance to the spirit world. So that going through the vortex, the shaman then comes out on the other side in a completely new spiritual realm. very different from having uh, wishful fantasies or, or um, be doing some daydreaming uh, you know it's a it's a literally it's an inner uh, travel comparable to the space travel pioneering consciousness researcher Stanislav Grof has spent more than four decades researching the science of the ancient shamans he says shamans also used breathing techniques to alter their consciousness. He teaches modern travelers to produce a mild form of oxygen deprivation in the brain, similar to that experienced by climbers at high altitudes. Groff believes the non-ordinary states this can produce were a fundamental part of all ancient cultures. The Western industrial civilization is really the only group of uh, people throughout human history that does not uh, hold the non-ordinary states uh, in high esteem. Every other group sort of uh, uh, has tremendous appreciation of these states and they spend a lot of uh, time and uh, energy trying to develop very safe and uh, effective ways of, of uh, inducing these non-ordinary states. Human consciousness remains largely a mystery to science. It's believed our awareness comes from a complex interaction between sensory signals, memories, and the subconscious mind. Groff and others argue the subconscious plays a more powerful role than we imagine. That we use it to develop ideas, and through the ages, our ancestors used it to develop human intelligence. The ideas, the inspiration that can come from an ordinary state can help later when the person returns into the ordinary state, you know, to uh, substantially improve one's uh, way of being in the world. Advocates of this theory suggest inspirational ideas can come from a transpersonal realm, hidden from everyday awareness. That the dreamlike imagery in altered states often contain solutions to the questions on our minds. Many people in the transpersonal field feel that uh, all genuine, really deep creativity comes from the transpersonal realms. Obviously, you have to do your homework. I mean, you have to sort of uh, uh, consume somehow the, the information of a particular discipline. You have to be aware of the problems, you have, to, you have to define them very clearly, but the solution very frequently comes uh, in a non-ordinary state. Some of modern science's great discoveries have occurred in dreamlike flights of the imagination. In 1862, after dreaming of a snake biting its tail, chemist Auguste Kekula predicted the circular structure of the benzene molecule, a breakthrough vital to understanding the chemistry of life. Molecular researcher Dr. Carrie Mulis started a genetic revolution in the 1990s 
when he designed an innovative DNA cloning technique. He credits the discovery to an altered state's flight along a strand of DNA. Even Albert Einstein claimed some of his theories, including the groundbreaking theory of relativity, came to him while he was in a twilight state. <laughs> 